Good evening and welcome to A View for You, a twice monthly journal about people and events of interest in the San Francisco Bay Area. My name is Peter Camarda, I'll be your host tonight, and we're broadcasting to you live on the San Francisco Public Access Channel, Comcast Channel 76, AT&T Channel 99, and Astound Channel 30. Tonight we're beginning a special series on poetry. We'll have several shows dealing with poetry um, in the next couple of weeks. And my guest tonight is Arthur Evans, a local poet, activist, and philosopher, a man who wears many hats, although he's not wearing one now. Welcome, Arthur. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. I left my hats at home. <laughs> a pleasure to have you, Arthur. Uh, so you've been 35 years at Isn't the Hate. Is yes, right? 35 years at the corner of Hate and Ashbury. That's another program. That's another program. We'll have to do that at some time. Well, tonight, in honor of Gay Pride Month, we're going to do some uh, Greek poetry, uh, which Arthur is going to read in the original, uh, which is going to be a special treat, and we will have it in translation as well, of course. We don't expect everyone to know ancient Greek. But we'll give you the sound to really hear, the chance to really hear the sound of it. And before we start, I just wanted to mention that um, Arthur has done a lot of work um, with uh, philosophy. That's where he came to originally learn ancient Greek. And he's written a book called A Critique of Patriarchal Reason, which is there um, on your screen. And um, that was sort of one of them starting points, I guess, or the culminations of all the study you did in philosophy. Yes, uh, Critique of Patriarchal Reason is, a, is an overview of Western philosophy, beginning with the ancient Greeks, and all the source material in that book that deal with antiquity, uh, I have translated myself. My background actually is a Greek and, Greek and Roman philosophy. So we're going to get a really a, quite an educated view of the poetry, but I think also a fun view. We've been through it once before, and it's uh, really quite dramatic and interesting. So without further ado, let's uh, move on to some of the text, and uh, tell us a little bit about the first series that you're going to read, Arthur. Yes, Peter, thank you. Uh, I have, to begin with, a poem by Sappho of Lesbos. She lived about 2,600 years ago, and she wrote a very beautiful poem to the love goddess Aphrodite. Uh -huh. And what happened is that Sappho fell in love with a beautiful young woman who did not return her favors. This is a familiar story, right? That is a very <laughs> familiar story. I think we've heard that story many times. Yeah. And in order to have better success, Sappho prayed to Aphrodite, the goddess of love and sex. <clears throat> and Sappho said to her, You've come to me before when I needed your help. Won't you come down and help me again? And the goddess answers her. She appears in the sky in a golden chariot, surrounded by swarms of sparrows. The ancients associated those with sex and, and other things. <laughs> and the goddess comes to her, and although Sappho was very passionate in this poem, the goddess sort of makes fun of her. And this is Sappho making fun of herself. The goddess says, <clears throat> okay, Sappho, who have you fallen in love with this time? Mm -hmm. Who is it again? And Sappho says, well, I can't help myself. Uh, please help me out. And the goddess says, okay, uh, we have a good connection. I'll make her fall in love with you. And Sappho thanks her, and that's the end of the poem. The poem is wonderful because it's passionate and serious and majestic, but it's also very funny uh, because Sappho is making fun of her herself. And we and, don't always expect these ancient Greek poems to be humorous, but no, they really, uh, all the emotions are present there. It shows you how sophisticated the poetry of, of Sappho was. Uh, it represents a very high level of culture on her part. So what I'm going to do, Peter, is I'm going to read the poem in sections. First, I'll give my English translation, and then I will uh, read it in ancient Greek. We have a pretty good idea of how that sounded. And while I do that, you will be putting on the screen the ancient Greek text. So everyone can, the letters. everyone can follow along with the bouncing I, ball. I have to know. give a warning to our readers. Uh, if you know modern Greek, you're in for a shock because ancient Greek was pronounced quite differently from modern Greek. So be prepared for that. All right. <laughs> so we will begin. This is Sappho invoking the goddess. Immortal Aphrodite on your multicolored throne. Zeus's wily daughter. I pray you, don't break my heart with grief and longing, goddess, but come and visit here. 
and now we will do the Greek. Poiki lotron atanat aprodita. Pai dios to lobloka liso mais. Mama sais, si marone ais, si damna potnia tumon. Alla tweed elte. Those sounds are interesting. They're they're not like anything I've heard before. Uh, no, they're not actually. Uh, the the musicality of ancient Greek is uh, has been lost by most modern languages, including modern Greek. So uh, the sing song quality is is strikes people right away. This is a uh, Sappho saying, "Well, if you've ever come to me before, here's your chance again." And this is what she says. If ever before you have heard my prayers, listening from afar and leaving the palace of Zeus, yoking your steeds to a chariot of gold, have driven here. I put a rota, tas emas audos ai ois palui eclues, patros de damon lipois, cruceon altas. <clears throat> and Sappho continues with how the goddess has appeared to her before. And sparrows, lovely and swift, would lead the way before you, arching above dark earth, with rapidly fluttering wings. Then down through the sky above, and look! They were here. Kaloi desagon uki estrotoi perigas milainas. Pugna dineon tester ap orono aeteros diamexo. Ipsa dexticondo. Sappho continues. And you, blessed one, with a smile on your immortal face, would ask, what again was making me suffer? <laughs> and why, yet again, I had called you. And what, oh please, I would most like my smitten heart to come to have. Sudo makair, medi aisa atanato prosopoi er uti deute peponta. Koti deo te kalami, koti moi malista te leo genestai mai no lai tu moi. And now the goddess speaks to Sappho. Which girl again do you want seduction to lead to your affection? <laughs> Who Sappho has done you wrong? Even if she has fled you, quickly will she pursue. And if she has spurned your gifts, she will be the giver. And if she has loved you not, quickly will she do so now, though previously unwilling. This is a powerful goddess. Very powerful. Don't you wish you had one like that? I think there are a lot of people in San Francisco who would like to find that goddess. This, this is the <laughs> same passage in Greek. Tinadeo te peito mais again es san pilotata. This swipes up a decay. Kaigarai peoge. Pacios the oaks. I the door a madacat. All the door say. I the mapile. Pacios pilase. Coke et alois. And in response, Sappho says to her, Won't you come to me again as you have before? Come to me again, this time too. Free me from this painful, anxious care. And what my heart desires to bring about, make it happen for me. May you, yourself, be my ally. El temoi kainun, kalapan de lu sanek merim nan, osa demoi teles sai tumos i mere teleson, sudauta. Zumma <laughs> kasessa.